Hey, thanks for joining the Empower Church podcast. We pray that this message impacts you. And if you want to learn more about Empower Church and its ministries, please visit empowerchurch.org.au. Hey, what great worship this morning. How powerful is that? Can we put our hands together on the worship team this morning? Man, I was, I was literally nearly going to be in tears this morning as I was in the presence of God. And uh, praise God I didn't do that because I, oh God, I got to get up and preach. So yeah, but it was just a beautiful presence of God this morning. So we honor and thank the team so, so much. Kate Shula does an amazing job. Can we thank her as well and all the leaders and team there? They're incredible. Do a great job. So good. Hey, while we're honoring people, I just want to take this moment to honor our youth ministry empire. Um, they uh, just completed term two uh, of the year as well. And I had the privilege of being there on a Friday night, just two Fridays ago, uh, just just here, just a, a part of the night. And uh, it was an amazing night as well. And I want to celebrate a couple of key things. Uh, the, the youth ministry has grown uh, in the past probably term or two. Uh, this year, it's really seen some great growth this year as well. Of teenagers that have come in from right across schools, across our area as well. And um, But this term, we've seen a lot of salvations. A lot of young people coming to Christ. And like, it's every Friday, isn't it, guys? Every single Friday, there's, there's teenagers coming to Jesus, which is it's almost like a damn wall's broken open and souls are getting saved. One Friday night, they saw 14 decisions on one night, which is awesome. So let's give Jesus a clap for that. So, so good. Pastor Nick and Johanna do an amazing job. They're actually on leave at the moment, uh, but they do an amazing job along with all the leaders of the team, which is incredible. So good. Well, we're going to dive into the Word this morning and uh, open up your, your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. So we're still on the, the journey of thriving life. It's been an amazing series over this term. And, uh, and, and June has been focused on our spiritual life, our, our, our walking spiritually with Christ. And how many know we're a part of the family of God who believes that today? We're citizens of heaven. We're a part of the kingdom of God. So we can walk in freedom. We can walk in His deliverance. We can walk in His promises, His blessings. We can walk in His authority as, as Christ, the rock, the cornerstone in our lives. There is a power to live in a spiritual freedom and strength in our lives every single day. So no matter what happens, no matter what goes on, there can be a steadfastness. There can be a resilience in our lives because we walk with Christ spiritually every single day. Who believes that's important? So important for our lives every day. So it says this in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. It says, So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, being uh, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Who believes that's an amazing scripture there? Amazing passage. Now, if you're new today, what a Gentile is, is a Gentile is just a non-Jew. Okay, the Jewish people are the people of God. Um, you know, they were God's first people and God had uh, provided salvation for them through Christ, but he's also provided salvation for everybody else who can be saved and become a part and grafted into the family of God as well, which is powerful. Who thanks God for that? Thank Jesus for that today, which is awesome. But I want to start today by, by just really talking about the power of knowing who you are in Christ. Know who you are in Christ. That, that what we've been brought up, sort of saved into, what we've been brought into through what Christ has done, we've been saved into a life of authority, of strength, of victory in Christ. And we can know, stand on the identity that we have in Christ. It is so, so important. You know, a few years ago, I was at a, I was at a, a, a paintball kind of morning with a bunch of dudes. And uh, how many know that's got to be fun just to, you know, it was a great morning. I, from memory, I think it was like a box morning or something like that we were at. And uh, we went down to paintball in Brisbane. And, uh, and that particular day was really, really cool because, because we had some army regulars that were there that day. teams kind of dispersed amongst the teams. And, um, and I thought, this is going to be awesome. I, I hope I'm on their team. I really, really do. And uh, because, uh, I mean, it's, oh, it gets, there was just something amazing when you did get, you know, put on a team with these guys 
there was an automatic confidence that you knew we're going to win. We're going to take the hill. This is going to be incredible. Uh, you know, it's like being on a team with Dave Hodgson. Like, I mean, uh, we're going to win. There's no worries. I mean, what do we need to do, Dave? How, how, do we, how do we attack this? What's the battle strategy? What are we going to do? And, uh, and so there, it, it was just so much fun. And, uh, and, and, of course, when I was on the teams with these guys, we always won. And I was, I was like, you tell me what to do. I'll, I'll do it. I'll stand there. Okay, shoot that thing there. Okay, we'll do it. And, and I took a lot more shots than they did. For some reason, they just always hit their target. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, uh, you know, there was one moment at the end, the last game, it was kind of this, this game. It was kind of like capture the, the hill type thing. And to capture the hill, you had to get up. And, and there was this kind of uh, signpost that was on this, uh, you know, bearing and, uh, and it, the one team was black and one team was gold. And if you hit it at the right time, it would go up and whatever color was on top won the hill. Okay. So it was like, oh man, this is cool. But man, I wasn't on with the army regulars. And I'm like, oh, bums, how are we going to win this? This is crazy. And, uh, and, and so, so we, it's like we had a five minute time limit and whatever color was at the top would win. So like with 30 seconds to go, it was still on black. We were on gold. I said, that's it. I don't care. It's just paintball. So I ran for my life up to the top of the hill and I hit this thing as hard as I could. And what felt like 1 million paintballs hitting me at the same time. It was in the head. It was everywhere. It was in places I didn't want it to hit. Um, and, and I mean, I hit it and it turned around and I just rolled down the hill in just writhing pain. I was like crazy. And, and we won, which is great. But, you know, and, and, and it was, but, but I had to give my, my life to, to do it, you know, in, in paintball terms. And, uh, and, but the, the cool thing about it is, is that there's just something amazing when you know you, you're on a winning team. There's something amazing when you know that you've got victory and you've got strength and you've got support and you've got the power of God and the power of heaven that's with you. It's just, it's just incredible. There's, there, there's, there's so much confidence that comes in knowing that. And I want to tell you today, the devil would love for you to just forget about that. He'd love for you just to, just to think that God's power is not that powerful. And, 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 and you know, oh, that's for some people, that's not for me. And he'd love for you to believe that lie. But the truth is, is that it's there for all of us who have Jesus in our lives. We live in a victorious life with him. And we can choose that every day of our lives to live in that place of strength, live in that advantage for victory every single day. And there is a power to this. And as Ephesians says, we've been brought into the family of God. Christ is our cornerstone. We're not foreigners. We're not outsiders. We're insiders. We have access to this. We have access to the presence of God coming into the Holy of Holies with the Father because Jesus made room for that. And when we've got His promises, His blessings that we live it every day. And I want to encourage you, that's not something that we can just be entitled about. We're grateful for it, but it is something we can be confident in. Confident in every single day of our lives. And I love the fact that Jesus, when He walked the earth, and he, the, the, all those 33 years that he was here, I mean, you know, he walked in confidence. He was confident. He knew who he was. He knew where he was from. And he knew what he was here to do. He just knew what it was. And I love that at John 13, 3, it actually notes this so powerfully. It says this, Jesus knew the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and that he would return to God. I mean, you know, that's a confident position. I know who I represent. I know who I'm from. And I know that I'm, I'm going back to him to sit at his right hand once I achieve the victory, once we've seen the breakthrough for all of humanity and all of creation. I know I will return to my place of divinity beside the Father. And I know that I, I know what I'm here to do. And how many know there was a confidence nothing could put him off the track, nothing could put him off the focus. His face was fixed upon the cross. We, even when we look at how, how it, it alludes to the fact, even the week before the cross, Jesus was just fixed on where he was going. 
Why? He knew that he was going to suffering. He knew that he was going to lay down his life in such pain. But he knew for the joy of the cross, the joy of the salvation, the joy of the connection of all humanity that could come to him through the power of the cross and the resurrection, he was confident. How many know today that we can tap into that type of confidence every day? We can have that every single day of our lives to walk in a spiritual strength and a spiritual authority with Christ through the Holy Spirit every day of our lives. Now, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5 says this, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. Everyone say mighty. Mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive into captivity to the obedience of Christ. See, the power of this is that it's saying that it, it, with the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means they're not physical. They may not be physical weapons. They're spiritual weapons. All right, they're spiritual weapons. It's a spiritual position that we can stand on in Christ every day, knowing that I walk with Christ. He is my cornerstone. He lives within me and there is power in Him every day. I'm not on the defensive. I'm on the offensive. We are not on the defensive. We're on the offensive. Why? Because the victory's already been won. It was won at the cross. And we come from a position of victory. It's not like we're trying to just get the victory. No, we're claiming the victory that has already been won. That's the power of our stance spiritually with Christ every day. See, the power of this is knowing that some things in life, yes, can be just natural that take place. And some things in life are spiritual, okay, in life, all right? And it's knowing the balance between knowing what's natural and knowing what's spiritual. We've got to be able to walk with that every day. I mean, you know, we're called to walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. So what, another way of saying it, walk in the Spirit and not just live your life in the natural and thinking natural thoughts every day. We've got to tap into the spiritual as well. We're going to tap into what heaven is saying, what the Spirit's leading us, what the Holy Spirit is leading for us to do each and every day. And to walk in this place means that you and I as Christ followers, we need to have a prayer life, a prayer life. Pastor Nick preached an amazing work last Sunday. He talked about, hey, do you have your place of prayer? Do you have your place that you go to? Like he talked about his, his living room gray chair that he sits in every morning. That's awesome. Hey, what's, what's your place? What's my place of where we go and we get into the presence of God? It could be walking on the beach. It could be going for a walk out in the bush. What is it today that helps us to connect with Jesus every day of our lives? See, we need that connection point with God. Why? Because if we don't, we get so caught up in what's going on in this world. We get caught up in the natural. We get caught up in, in, in what Romans talks about. It talks about futile thinking. We can get caught up in futile thoughts that are just thoughts of this age and thoughts of this world. But Christ doesn't want us to live in a place where our thoughts are connected to the spirit of this age. Our thoughts need to be connected to heaven. Amen. Because we're here to bring the kingdom of God into every space we're in, every environment we're in, every day. And that's why Corinthians made this statement. This is my second point today. is to bring every thought captive. Bring every thought captive. See, there is a great power through Christ, that He has authority over all things. And we're called to, to live in a space in our lives where we're not as Christians called to just kind of follow every rabbit trail our thoughts take us. Some thoughts are not from God. Some thoughts, when you just think about it, just in a practical sense, sometimes it's just us thinking, all right? Sometimes it's the influence of our friends and people that we hang with or around us in our workplace, wherever we are. Sometimes it is the devil, okay? And his thoughts, because he works in the realm of thoughts, in the realm of the, the imagination. He works in that space so that he can try and get a hold of your attention and get you distracted off God, okay? 
But you know what the other one and the final one and the most powerful one is? Some of those thoughts are from God, okay? And we've got to understand to be able to decipher and discern between what's me, what's from just people around me, what's from the enemy and what is from God, I need to be tapped into the Holy Spirit. I need to make sure that I'm being able to discern how I'm thinking and how I'm allowing my mind to be led by Christ every single day. Because some thoughts are not going to lead us down good paths, okay? Some thoughts are going to lead us to places that God doesn't want us to be, okay? And you can allow your mind to be taken on roads because when, as your mind goes, your heart will eventually follow. And so we've got to make sure that our thoughts are being reined in and brought under the authority of who Jesus is. Amen. Hey, is this a heaven thought? Is this a kingdom thought? You know, that, that thought that's like, oh man, I hate my boss and this and that and all these things that come in. No, 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 that's not a kingdom thought. I'm going to come back and I'll bring that under the authority of Christ. Lord, I'm going to see the best in my boss. I'm going to see the best in my boss. I'm going to honor them. I'm going to, I'm going to set a great environment in this place so that I can see change. I can see the change that I'm believing for in this place today. See, our thoughts, they will lead us down roads, but Christ wants us to be led straight to where He is. Amen? So that we're changing environments and shifting environments around our lives. Craig Rochelle has a great book called Winning the War in Your Mind. There's a great passage in this book. It talks about Houdini. Who remembers Houdini? Remember the story of Houdini. Okay, Houdini was an escape artist, okay? And he could escape out of anything, like, you know, straight jackets, chains, you know, he scraped out, he could escape out of prison, jail cells, stuff like that as well. And this one time he was coming to this particular jail and the jailer had this plan that he was going to put Houdini off, okay? All right, and this is, this is what happened. It says this, it's on the screen. But one jailer had heard that Houdini was coming and the jailer was ready. When Houdini closed the cell door, the jailer put the key in the lock and secretly turned it in the wrong direction. And then he removed the key and everyone watched as Houdini struggled to escape, but unknowingly locking himself in repeatedly. Finally, in frustration, Houdini admitted he could not escape. The jail then revealed his deception. Houdini had believed the lie, and the lie had held him captive. How much is that so much about how full life, isn't it? So we, sometimes we can believe a lie that's just straight from the pit of hell. It's from the enemy, all right? We can believe that lie. Why? Because we're, like, we're just, we've been, you know, led down that track. And this is why we've got to bring thoughts under the authority of who Christ is, because we can do this spiritually, okay? To bring it under the authority of Christ means that, hey, I don't have to be led on all sorts of trails. Hey, does this line up with the Word of God? Because I want to tell you when, when a thought is from heaven, it will line up with the Word of God. It will bring you to a place of faith. It'll bring you to a place where you see Jesus for who He really is. It'll bring you to a place where you can start to see the things that heaven desires for your life, desires for your marriage, desires for your family, desires for your workplace, your business, for your school. Those of you in school right now, those of you at uni, hey, He desires to infiltrate into all spaces of our lives. And that is the desire of heaven is that He's not just gonna get into our lives, but He can affect change in those around us. And Christ wants to, capture our thoughts. Heaven wants to capture our thinking. So our thinking is not in the airways. I want to tell you today, the Second World War, it was won, yes, through a whole different means of strategy. But you want to know the main thing that won the Second World War was the airways. That's how the war was won, that they, the Allies were able to take control of the airways. Therefore, they could gain greater territory. Okay? And I'm not condoning war or anything like that today, but what I am saying is this, is that, hey, that's where the battle's fought. It's between the ears. It's in the airways. It's in the thought line. That's where the battle's fought. is because the devil likes to deceive and lies. I want to I tell you today, that is the devil's language. That's what Jesus said. He is the father of lies and all he can speak is lies. So that's his language. That's, his, that's the way he talks. It will never be truth. It will never be hope. It will never be faith. So we want to tap our lives and our thoughts and our minds onto the things of God, okay? The things that the Word teaches us, the things of faith that lead us back to a place where we're not being really led astray 
by the enemy or led astray by the spirit of this age, but we're, we're holding on to truth. Amen? God wants to capture our thoughts. You believe that today? Get a hold of our mind. Romans 12, 2 says this, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, this is how Christ wants to capture our minds through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Because the enemy wants us to conform to the age of the, the, the spirit of this world, but Christ has redeemed us from it. Amen? And so there's a, there's a process of transformation, sanctification that takes place every day when we make a decision to say, I'm going to choose to think what the Word of God teaches me. I'm going to choose to think what Christ has said about my life. I'm going to choose to think this about my marriage, my family, my world around me. I'm going to choose to think, what does heaven say about me? I'm going to allow the transformative work of the Holy Spirit to move in my world. And how many know sometimes there's a real battle in this, isn't there? Because sometimes your flesh nature your, your, is at battle and at war with your spirit man. There's, a, there's this wrestle that goes on. All right, and the, when that wrestle is going on, sometimes it can be very, very difficult to capture our thoughts, can't it? That's why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why we need help. See, Christ doesn't ask us to do this without giving us the power of the Holy Spirit, the helper, to help us rein our thoughts back in and bring them back to the place we need to be. And if we do this as, as Christ followers, hey, we're gonna see restoration in places that we, we've been struggling with for a long time. We can see restoration in situations in marriage. We can see restoration with family situations. We can see restorations at work. Why? Because we're allowing our thoughts to be captured by heaven and we're bringing that back in. We're beginning to believe what Jesus has spoken for us. Amen. So one part of this is our thought life, but the next, how many know, is our word life. The way we speak, the way we talk, the way we speak into the atmosphere, um, I want to tell you today that our words are powerful and we, we are called to be able to speak truth, speak the Word of God into atmospheres and situations. Why are our words powerful? Because it's a part of the nature of God and we have the Imago Dei. We have made and created in the image of God. Therefore, our words have power because God's words have power. Amen. And so his words have power. As it says in John chapter one, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God. And by all things, the word he spoke into being, he spoke into life. It was through Jesus, the word, the mouthpiece of God spoke everything into being. So God is, is, is what John was trying to show us is this, is that, is that Jesus was there at the beginning, Father, Son, Holy Spirit at creation. The Father used the Son to speak everything into being. Let there be light. Let there be a firmament. Let that, as he, as he began to speak these things into being, that's what brought about creation because God's word has power. But our words, they can have power as well. Our words can have power to shift and change situations in our lives. All right, and this is why thought life comes first and our word life follows. Because out of the abundance of our heart, as the Bible teaches, is that the mind and the heart at times is the same word in Hebrew and in the Greek, in the Greek as well. Out of the abundance of our inner man, our inner life, the mouth will speak. So capturing our thoughts and bringing them to the authority of Christ is the first step. The second step is, hey, what's coming out of my mouth? What's coming out of my mouth? What am I speaking into the atmosphere? Because our words create our world. John chapter 20, Job actually, chapter 22, 26 to 28 says this, For then you will have your delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. You will make your prayer to Him. He will hear you and you will pay your vows. You will also declare a thing and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. You will declare a thing and it shall be established for you. But see, the power of this is speaking into the power of our words. All right. Proverbs 18, 22 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat of its fruit. And there's power in our tongue. Who believes that today? Believe it? All right. So as Job is saying this, that if we declare a thing, it will be established for us in verse 28. But I love how it says in verse 22, 
It says, receive, please, instruction from his mouth. Whose mouth? His mouth. Look at the scripture. Please receive instruction from his mouth, from the mouth of the Father, from the mouth of God, and lay up his words in your heart. What Job is trying to teach us here, we're not just saying whatever we want. So I'm going to win a million dollars in the lottery. If it's not the lottery, it'll be the Powerball. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be this. I'm gonna be that. No, it's not just saying whatever we want, but it's taking the Word of God. It's standing on it. And it's confessing that into our will. Because His Word has power. The Word of God has power. It can change your life. It can shift environments. It can change situations every day. It brings life. It brings healing. It brings restoration. It brings victory, breakthroughs. It helps bring promises into our lives, knowing the blessings of God, standing on the Word of God and confessing that around our lives is powerful. So it's not just the declaration of anything, it's the declaration of the Word of God, speaking life. Sometimes, yes, that is straight up just quoting Scripture, speaking Scripture over situations. Can I tell you today, I pray for you every day. As your pastor, I'm in prayer for you every day, every day. And there are particular scriptures I'm quoting over everyone in this church every single day. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that because I know the power in the spirit realm that that's shifting atmospheres around your life. When you wake up every morning, you're getting your kids ready for school or you're getting ready for work or whatever you're doing, you, you just got to know, hey man, I can tap into what God is doing. And I'm praying this every day. God, let there be breakthroughs. Let there be healing for those who need healing quoting some scriptures there, Lord, victories. Lord, sometimes I know of particular situations and we'll, so I, sometimes I'll just bring a scripture and just keep quoting that and speaking that over the situation. Why? Because I'm declaring what has already been decreed from his mouth. And so everything in heaven, on the earth and on the earth is going to bow its knee to Jesus Christ. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's won the victory at the cross and the res resurrection. And so I'm going to stand on his declaration. Speak it over your life. Speak it over my family, over my marriage, over our lives, over my kids. And I want to tell you today, you can do it too. If you're not already doing it, keep doing it if you're doing it. It's powerful. But if you're not, how about add this to your life? Add it to your life. Take a moment in your prayer life. When you're driving to work or you're on the train to get to work in Brizzy or whatever, you got those airpods in your ears, you, whatever it is. Hey, why don't you begin to pray and confess scripture and quote scripture over situations. Maybe you got that big deal and you don't know how it's going to come through at that, in that, that business deal. You go, hey, Lord, I just thank you. This is in your hands. If this is your will, it's going to come to pass. But I just speak life into this situation. Give me wisdom, Lord Jesus. You said in James, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it liberally. So I liberally need a lot of wisdom today, Lord. Come on. They're good prayers, are they? They're good prayers. And it's quoting scripture around our lives. As I close today, I, went, I, I remember years ago, I was on this altar. I was praying. We were praying for miracles for people and healings. And, uh, and a particular lady came out and, um, and she had had so much pain in her arms, like aching pain every single day, barely could sleep at night. And uh, she, had on, she was on medications and putting ointment on her on her kind of, it was all in the muscles and, and everything. And, and they couldn't really work out what it was. All right. She was just in aching pain all the time. And, and so she came out and I began to pray for a belief for a miracle. And the Holy Spirit stopped me. And he said these words to me. He said, I can't move. I said, why? And this is under my breath. This is with the Holy Ghost as I'm trying to pray. Why? He said, she keeps speaking negative over the situation and I can't move. So I stopped. I knew this, this lady very well. And I said, hey, can I just, can I just, can we just talk about this for a second? You know, I really feel right now, have you been speaking really negative over this situation? Oh, she said, every day, every single day, I hate this thing. But, you know, she just began to let out her heart, her emotion. She has a lot of pain. And I said, oh, look, I understand. I get it. But I just feel from God right now, would you be willing 
to take the next seven days. And whenever you feel like speaking negative over what the pain you're in, why don't you quote a scripture? Why don't you quote a scripture over it? Why don't you just see? I just want, I, I want you to see what God does. And, uh, and, and, and I gave her a couple off the top of my head. I said, go, I want you to write them down as soon as you sit back in your seat. And I want you to just make sure every day, whenever you're feeling that, that you'll quote those scriptures, okay? And so next Sunday, come to church. She comes on in, comes straight up to me. And she said, first, she didn't say hello. She said, it works. It works. I'm like, what? I forgot all about it. What works? She said, the Bible works. The scripture works. She said, I haven't had pain since Wednesday. I've been able to sleep. I've had a victory in my body. I said, praise Jesus. Come on, let's praise Him. Let's pray again. Let's believe for a full healing and a full recovery in your body. Amen. And so we prayed and man, praise God for that miracle. But God wants to move in our lives. And see, I want to encourage us today. Sometimes, sometimes people can pray a certain way and then they'll go and live their day and they'll kind of counteract the things they prayed for. They'll kind of all the negativity and the doubts and the unbelief can just be flooding out of their mouth. And hey, why don't we, whatever we pray for, we're going to believe for and stand within our words every day. And that doesn't mean we don't talk about the issues we have sometimes with the right people in the right moments, Okay. But it is a moment of us knowing that we can, hey, man, I can speak life into this situation. I can speak scripture into this situation. And I'm going to partner with heaven. See the victory. See the change. My body will be healed in Jesus' name. By his stripes, I am healed in Jesus' name. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover in the name of Jesus. I am more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. I am an overcomer in Jesus Christ. Oh man, there is a power to saying these things over our lives every day. Quote those scriptures, believe, stand on the Word of God so that we can see change in the things that we're believing for today. Hey, we're called to be the difference to the rest of this world. We're not called to be like this world. We're called to show them the way. That's what we're called to do. Show them how you connect with God, how to connect with His life and His power because it's for anyone that reaches out and wants it. Amen. Awesome. Why don't we close our eyes this morning? It's right across the auditorium. I want to ask any today if there's anyone here that maybe you've never said a prayer to accept Jesus into your life today. Hey, it's so good that you're here with us this morning. Maybe you've come with a friend or a family member. Maybe you've been for a few weeks or months, but you've never said the prayer to accept Jesus into your life. We want to give you an opportunity where you can today. This is one of the best prayers you can ever pray in your life. It's the prayer to accept Jesus as your Savior. And, and God loves you. He is very, very real. Jesus is real. He did come. He did die on a Roman cross. He's risen from the dead. And the, the Bible shows us and teaches us. He's seated in the right hand of God and the Spirit. So we need to understand today that God he is real and He loves you. He's got a plan and purpose for your life. And you know what this prayer is all about? This prayer is about taking the starting journey of knowing God, knowing Him for yourself, opening up your heart to accept Jesus into your life as God, as your Savior, as your friend, as your Lord. The power of this is that you can take steps from this moment on of not doing life alone, but doing it with God rather than without Him. And not only that, it's the steps of doing that with others, other believers and others in the, in the house of God as well. There's a power to this, but it starts with Jesus. And so today I want to encourage anyone who does not know Jesus today, if you want to just lift your hand today, say, I need Jesus. I need Jesus today. I want to say yes to Jesus. If that's you, just raise your hand. Just lift it so I can see it today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful. Maybe there's people here today and you need to make a recommitment to Christ. Maybe you, you have been saved, but you know you've pulled back from Jesus. You've pulled back from God. You want to come back. You want to renew that relationship. You want to reconnect, reconnect, recommit your life to Jesus. If that's you today, just sit your hand. See, I need Jesus. I want to come back again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. 
What I love this morning, if you can just, we're going to pray this together. And I love for you to repeat these words after me, the prayer of salvation. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I ask you today, forgive me of my sin. I accept you today as my Saviour, as my Lord. I'm born again into your kingdom and your family. Amen. Awesome. Can we put our hands together and honour everyone who's prayed that prayer for the first time today? Best decision you can ever, ever make.